Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Science Video 14. It's on human population size. One of the pioneers in this field was Thomas Malthus, put forward this essay on how changes in our population in the past and in the future will impact human happiness. It's not really a happy story. It's called the Malthusian catastrophe. And so countries can produce food, but they can only increase food production in a linear fashion. And we know that populations increase exponentially. So as long as you're in the green, you're okay. But once our population surpasses the amount of food that we can produce, we've got a catastrophe, we've got famine, people are going to die. Now this happened in the last century. Countries like Mexico and India saw that the food production was not increasing at a rate that could supply food for their growing population. So what did they do? They brought in the biologists. Norman Borlaug came in, brought in new farming practices, new varieties. We called this the Green Revolution and it solved the problem. It's a pretty nice thing to put on your resume, saved a billion lives. Now that's just one solution. We can increase through technology food production, or we could simply stabilize that population. And we know that human populations have been stable for a long time and have only increased exponentially through industrialization. Once we have constant food, modern uh, sanitation, modern medicine, populations will simply take off. Now what's going to happen to the world population into the future? It's a really hard question to answer because we're not just one country. We're a world that's make it made up of a number of different continents and different countries on that. And each of those are at different stages along what's called the demographic transition. But we have powerful tools. We have age structure diagrams. I talked about that in the last video that are a snapshot of the population but can give us some predictions of what may happen in the future. And then we have history of this demographic transition. We know what happens to countries as they are industrialized. In other words, the population will increase, stabilize, and then we find that it actually starts to drop off. Now, if you're either side of this, as your population is taking off, it puts pressure on the environment and on the economy. And so that's bad. And as it drops off, now we don't have people in the workforce who can supply economy for the people who have retired. And so where do you want your population? You want it stable. Maybe not here, maybe here, or maybe here. We want our population to remain the same. And countries can see this happening. And so what can they do? Well, they could just let it occur, or they can institute policy that can make changes. Both policy changes that affect overpopulation, so that increasing population, or that population decline. The most famous example is China's one-child policy, but we'll talk about some other ones as well. And so if we look at where we are today, 2015, there are 7.3 billion people on our planet. What does the UN predict our population is going to do into the future? Well, we've got high, medium, and low predictions. So which of these is right? We don't know. We'll have to see what's going to happen into the future. And the reason it's difficult is that we have all these different continents. So Asia right now has 4 billion people, but it could, you know, increase to the point where there are more people in Asia than there are people on the planet today, or it may not. You can see that Africa is definitely going to increase into the future and that some areas are actually going to decrease. But we've got these regions that are broken down into countries. Now in AP Environmental, you should know the top 10, uh, as far as population goes, countries on the planet. You probably could guess a few of those. It's going to be China, India, then the US. And then we go to Indonesia, Brazil, we've got Pakistan, uh, Nigeria, this would be Bangladesh, Russia, and then Japan. And so if you look at the population of, of these countries, just those countries account for about 60% of the population on our planet. Now, is that going to be the, the same percent into the future? Probably not. Because if we look at that same map and look at the growth rate, you can see that in some areas like the U.S., it's increasing. In a lot of these areas, the population is actually decreasing. In a lot of sub-Saharan Africa, it's really increasing into the future. And so that top 10 is definitely going to change as we look into the future. And what's going on is we have all these countries going through the industrialization. And we talked about that in the last video. It's this demographic transition. And so what happens is first of all the death rate drops, then the birth rate drops. And so if we're looking at what happens to the population over time, during this transition it'll radically increase, then it'll stabilize, and then it's eventually going to drop off. And so this is just a model. It doesn't always work exactly this way, but it's a pretty good prediction on what's going to happen as countries start to industrialize. Now, is anybody in type 1 
Not really. So there are some countries due to war and, and like the AIDS epidemic in, in Africa that are pushing them back into one. But in generally, they're either in phase two, three, or four. So if we look at some ones that are in different phases, Nigeria, so this is UN predictions. All these lines are different predictions, but this would be the average prediction. This is what we think will happen to Nigeria into the future. So by 2100, we could have maybe 700 million people in Nigeria. So you can see that's going to move it way up on the list. Where would we put that? It's somewhere in here in phase two. If we look at the US, you can see into the future, it's going to stabilize. If we look at birth and death rates, it should be stable, but we have a lot of immigration coming into the US. And then if we look at Japan, you can see that into the future, the population in Japan is radically going to drop off. And so we would put Japan in this phase four right here. And so remember, a model that we've used throughout this whole course is the idea of sustainability, that the earth or the country in this case has to support society, which is driven by economy. And so as the society gets larger and larger, it puts more constraints on the environment. But sometimes when the population gets smaller, it, pour, it puts more constraints on the society itself when we don't have people working anymore. And so how do we use government policy to avoid this problem of overpopulation? Well, one of the most famous examples is China's one child policy. What they did is made a strict policy where you could only have one child. You could have more, but there are going to be economic constraints put on you, not rewards, you won't get rewards. And so if we look at how this played out in the age structure diagram, it rolled out in the 1980s. And so those people would be 30 right now. So you can see that the population dropped off radically in 30 year olds and so what's going to happen over time you know that age structure diagrams will move up and so these are predictions in 2015 and now we're looking at 2020 and now 2025 and now 2030 and so you can see that that age structure which was a, a clear pyramid it was headed for exponential growth has really narrowed out now, why is this a problem? Well, in China, they call it the 421 problem. You've got four grandparents, two parents, and one child, and that one child has to support all of that. And so as it gets narrow in the age structure, it's gonna be hard for them to support all those people who are retiring as an economy. And then you can start to see a more subtle thing here in the age structure diagram. I don't know if you can see this, but there are more males than females. You can see it's shifting more to the left. And if we actually graph that, this is a graph that would show 100 females, and this is what number of males that we're getting. So the number of males are increasing. And the reason why is that they uh, see males as more valuable, especially in rural areas, um, higher status, and they can do more work. And so sometimes they're even abandoning those females. Now, the one child policy will probably be modified a little bit in China, but it's incredibly popular there. If we look at other countries and what they're doing, so if we look at Nigeria, what's the problem they're going to have is going to be overpopulation into the future. So they have a panel in Nigeria that's been put forward to kind of tackle this problem. And here are some of of their recommendations. We need to, number one, educate every child, promote family planning. In other words, allow birth control to be accessible to all people in their population, especially educate and employ women. Now, these three things right here are super important because if women are not educated, if they're not employed, what do they do when they become adult? Well, a lot of the time they'll get married and start having kids. And that's just gonna to lead to an increase in the population over time. We gotta get that fertility rate down. And also Nigeria is realizing that our economy has to support all of this growing population. And so we need to have a bigger economy and we also have to take care of our environment. So countries are doing things. If we look at Japan, for example, they have the exact opposite problem. So this is their age structure in 1920. Here it is in 1940, 1950. Same kind of thing as China, that it had this nice pyramid. But now look what happens. They're having less kids and less kids. And so now it's really narrow on the bottom. So what is prob what problem is Japan going to face? They're not going to have enough workers to take care of all of these people up here that have retired. And that's going to be a big deal. So what have they done? They want them to have more kids. And so they've instituted free childcare, maternity leave, increased benefits if you have children. And a lot of this is really not working in Japan. So now they're going to have to put forward ideas of like raising the retirement age. And eventually they're going to have to increase immigration because their workers are going to quickly fall back to the level of where they were in the 1950s. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in all the blanks? Well, let me do that for you. So over time, 
populations will undergo exponential growth whenever we have industrialization. What will happen in the future? Remember, it's difficult to tell because these continents are broken down into different countries. Two powerful tools we can use are age structure diagrams and the knowledge of the demographic transition that goes here. What can countries do? They can use policy. Policies that affect overpopulation and policies that affect a decline in the population as well. And I hope that was helpful. <laughs>